It's been a while, it's been a while since CNN purged all of their overpaid, underperforming anchors, and hey, we might as well check in with a couple of them. First and foremost, we have Chris Cuomo, who is... I don't know, trying to do an about face at this point, it's not totally unexpected because he comes from a very political family, right? His brother, you know, Andrew and his father, Mario, who are running the state of New York, okay? Not, not exactly entirely foreign of a concept and him also having a radio show, I think on uh, Sirius XM, I think he had a satellite radio show that was out there and then also saying that, I hate what I do on CNN, but I got to do it because, you know, it pays the bills and then just hopping on that same CNN broadcast saying, Oh, I don't say any of that stuff. So he's kind of a chameleon that's out there, but it is fun whenever he brings us up. So I don't know who he's trying to pander to with this because he's not going to win anybody over to his side. Like he's very, very funny whenever he rages. Okay. Or just blatantly lies. Like it was about, what was that? WikiLeaks during 2016. Oh, the media, the media can uh, go over these uh, very, very secret, top secret, sacred documents that have been leaked out there. Uh, just the public can't, uh, we we got different privileges that are out there. So again, a weird thing out there. Okay. Considering what's going on with Trump and Mar-a-Lago being raided. Was that just also just kind of a tacit admission that Hillary Clinton also had classified documents that were out there? Anyways, funny about that. Anyways, Chris Cuomo slams Democrats who demonize Trump supporters. Hey, wait a minute. That's our job. We're the media. Ah, that sucks. Former CNN anchor Chris Cuomo is calling out Democrats who demonize conservatives and supporters of former President Donald Trump. Ooh, like Joe Biden. Cuomo, who was ousted uh, from the New York, oh, from the network, sorry, following a scandal involving his brother, disgraced former New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, who again didn't get ousted for the right decision. Remember, he didn't get ousted because he killed a lot of people in nursing homes due to his policies. No, 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 uh, because he made a sausage joke and it made some girls feel bad. Uh, has uh, become increasingly vocal on social media over his political views since a departing CNN. That's insane. That's an insane sentence to read. Okay, not for the fact that it's uh, a false statement or anything like that. Just being more political post your CNN tenure. Wow. Okay. Responding to a CNN article reporting that Trump allegedly said he wouldn't leave the White House following the 2020 election. I don't think I've done anything with this so far. This is going to be released later than some other stuff as well. Okay. Time shift. Okay. I'm just saying that there was a new book that was published that said, oh my God, insiders and people close to Trump said that, oh, Trump would just sit in the White House and he said that he would never leave and he wouldn't let Biden take over office and blah, blah, blah. Another book, another day and another fucking slam against Trump. Cool. Hopefully you got your advance in full before it went to print because that's going to sell a 1.800 books. You, your friends and family, terrific. I don't even know who wrote that nonsense, nor do I fucking care at this point. Okay, and again, just go back and take a look. January 20th, Trump left in the morning, Biden took over at noon, and it's been downhill ever since. So again, he could have said a lot of fucking things. You could have made up even fucking more. So again, I think Cuomo's going to be right about this. Another thing that I never thought I'd said, responding to a CNN article, right, uh, Trump wouldn't leave, not fucking leaving doing his Jordan Belfort impression, okay, like he's Wolf of Wall Street. We're not fucking leaving! I'm gonna need a wrecking ball to take me out of here. Which was based on excerpts from an upcoming book by New York Times reporter Maggie Haberman. Oh, she's being sued by Project Veritas. And, oh my God, that's so sad because the New York Times had to write in their response um, to Project Veritas that uh, we're actually an opinion paper and nothing in here is actual news. <laughs> Fucking funny admission that you have here. Somebody writing, knowingly writing opinion columns for the New York Times saying that they have inside sources that Trump is never going to leave the White House. Fuck off. Does this matter? Yes, in the pursuit of justice, what is happening aggressively by more work or most accounts. However, do Dems win more vo votes by chasing Trump or cater catering to hopes and fears of what those who were disaffected slash desperate enough to vote for him? Don't look now, but I think Fredo's finally gained some sentience. It's almost like he understands that you attract more bees with honey than with vinegar. And realizing that the party of unity and the president who was going to preside as a, a president for all Americans, he was going to run as a proud Democrat, but be a president for all. 
has actually done none of that and instead it's just been orange man bad for i would say for the past two years but let's be fucking honest okay we're approaching our seventh fucking year actually we've probably eclipsed that since he came down the escalator in 2015 it's been wall to wall trump can't do fucking anything right even though people okay like most people are kind of retarded but for the most part they also understand that they were living a life that was pretty fucking good between 2017 and about the beginning of 2020 uh, everything just about every metric that was under their control was going up 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 up, up and then if it wasn't for democrats locking down states and never fucking opening them up shit would have been really fucking good following his remarks cuomo replied to a twitter user who said uh the disaffected voter theory has been thoroughly debunked oh my god not a twitter academic oh actually uh a study show and my experts say that your theory has been debunked uh, debate me bro cuomo stated that he witnessed it personally oh uh, excuse me yeah that's an anecdote and uh my experts actually say uh that you're wrong arguing that trump voters cast their votes to a billionaire hotel magnate to vote against the establishment y yeah exactly because again remember 2016 it was a career politician with more corruption than she has cankles and nobody fucking liked that, okay? A bunch of people, you remember, millions of Obama supporters also became Trump supporters. That's how he became president in 2016. And remember, there was even a bigger increase, an increase in votes that he got in 2020. But again, 81 million people can't be wrong. Nope, not at all. What's here? If I take off my glasses, can you see me winking? 81 legitimate million votes that Joe Biden got. Most popular president ever. He even got a bigger share of the black vote in Detroit than Obama. That's how popular Joe Biden was. Don't you forget about it. What are you talking about? It's not a theory. It's a reality I witnessed in countless interviews with voters who saw their vote as a rejection of the norm. Uh, who knew their guy was deeply flawed, but it was their guy and rejection of what they saw was a malign... Er, Oh, as malignant in D.C., Cuomo said. Again, no, that's akin to, I was just thinking about it because I've been listening to some old Andrew Tate interviews where he got into that debate, that discussion about uh, saying that women uh, are inferior drivers to men, okay? Saying that he feels less secure with a woman driving as opposed to a man because the worst driving that he's ever seen has been done by a woman, okay? They can barely fucking park. Again, something I personally know, okay? based on what my fucking experience teaching a family member how to drive okay her not knowing how to fucking park and then me just having to show her and then her to look and learn and then having to walk her through all that stuff going out for a run every single day okay and seeing some of the worst fucking driving happening only exclusively by a woman okay or ever seeing back when that was a thing people wearing their mask alone in their vehicle it was only one group of people and they have two very easy identifiers, just saying. But again, I'm sure there's some study out there, Hassan Piker, I'll provide it for everybody. It'll just thoroughly debunk that because actually women are safer drivers. Yeah, that's nice, wonderful, fantastic. When another liberal user suggested that Trump voters uh, elected Trump for his xenophobic and racist views. Oh my God, this old fucking gag. Do you really think that there are that many fucking racists in the United States? Like, for fuck's sakes, so just fuck off already. Cuomo responded to say that the demonization of Trump voters is the reason uh, they don't get support from those voters. Yeah, no, exactly. You've already disqualified them from this conversation by immediately labeling them with something that it's virtually impossible to disprove towards you you're a racist oh no i'm not a racist i love black people oh that's exactly what a racist would say it's running a salem witch trial on a much smaller scent or scale but it's also on twitter at the same time okay we're just uh, it's the bastion of idiocy some not all said cuomo uh, you are overstating it hurts your ability to expand your reach andrew yangs as many of his new supporters are former trump voters i don't actually know who supports andrew yang at this point because again he's just kind of a light blue democrat at this point tell me again how ubi is gonna fucking fix the world even though it's failed every single place that it's been tried he's uh, if you want to talk about grifters on the internet andrew yang a chief among them uh why didn't dems get them maybe because you demonize all who voted for them yep exactly 
I, I don't see anybody who's like, oh, I'm just so tired of all of those attacks from the other side. If I just capitulate to them, if I just vote for them, maybe if I can join them, they I can be redeemed in their eyes. It's, that shit doesn't happen. You see a lot of the exodus coming from one side to another. It just doesn't happen from red to blue. It happens. People will go from blue to red or from just blue to I'm never fucking voting again because all of this shit sucks and they're just flipping the fucking game table over. So Chris Cuomo, out from under the thumb of CNN, actually got some fucking decent takes out there. Cuomo made similar remarks slamming the Democrats in the recent past. In an August 1st podcast, Cuomo criticized January 6th committee, er, committee for playing the gotcha game with Trump instead of focusing on the details that caused the riot. Yeah, exactly. Instead of just putting a bandage over the gunshot wound, maybe trying to figure out, you know, if there's anything that you can stop underneath of that, okay? Instead of putting some disinfecting on the infected wound, maybe going a little bit deeper in order to figure out what the fuck going on. Or what's going on, sorry. Proper grammar. Now, absolutely, it is in your interest for what happened and by whom uh, to be rooted out and remedied. There uh, there could be crimes, especially in this Fugazi election front, uh, that we're just learning about now, Cuomo stated. Less so, I think, about the planning and the practical acts or aspects of what happened on January 6th. I don't see there's criminality there, at least on what's been offered. My question is, are we really leaning enough about or learning, sorry, enough about what matters, or is this starting to play like a gotcha game, like the impeachment? Wow, where's this Chris Cuomo back on CNN days? Oh, I, he could have been this exact same guy, but nobody fucking watches CNN. Speaking of which, uh, the human potato, he's found himself a new gig at Harvard. Can you fucking imagine? Oh my God, this is why, okay? And I see these trends happen in a bunch of different places. That's why I can accurately assess what's going on in Hollywood right now because I've seen this happen in the world of professional wrestling. Follow me for a second, very quick second, okay? The reason uh, professional wrestling, WWF at the time specifically, was the hottest property in all of pop culture is because they had massive names, massive stars, okay? It wasn't the goofy fucking plot lines. It wasn't any of the stupid stories that was running. It, hell, it was barely even the wrestling matches that they were having at the time. No, it's because Rock and Austin were at the top and they were some of the most famous people on fucking earth, okay? And then once those guys, after Austin retired and The Rock went to Hollywood, the fucking game completely changed. And CM, or not, what's CM Punk's a fucking worthless hunk of shit. Uh, John Cena, he could only carry it for so far and he just started to pander to kids and then it just all fucking crashed and now it's like Roman Reigns is the two year title reign nobody gives a fuck two million people are watching every week sweet but no that hot period in the late 80 or the late 90s early 2000s when everything was hot fucking shit it's because there were stars that were out there take a look at hollywood right now okay hollywood could do no wrong for so fucking long but now you take a look at just think of any movie star that's out there right now okay now i'm just gonna go ahead and curtail the criteria a little bit name a movie star that's under the age of 40 you can't not a legitimate movie star you can name some people who've been in some movies but there aren't any stars left and that's why hollywood's in the fucking shape it is right now and yet even when a project flops there are people that still just move on to the next project okay let it be nepotism let it be whatever you want to attribute it to these people don't fail out of the system. They end up failing up. CNN, oh, ousted CNN host Brian Stelter. You know why he was ousted? Because nobody liked his show. Nobody was fucking watching this shit. This video right here has a propensity to get a larger audience than reliable sources ever did. He gets a, a media fellowship at Harvard. What the fuck is he going to teach at Harvard? Okay, it's still Harvard, even though it's, you know. Not quite as prestigious as it used to be. I, I, why would he be the first pe er, person of all people that are out there to be working in any capacity regard regarding media? Unless it is how to tank a show that has been on the air for decades. Fired CNN talking head, po talking to t potato, or talking round head, whatever you want to call it. Brian Stelter landed a fellowship at Harvard. The former host of the since-canceled Reliable Sources said Monday. Stelter broke the news on social media that he's joining the Shorstein Center on Media Politics and Public Policy at Harvard's Kennedy School this fall. Can you fucking imagine? Somebody as biased as that 300-pound sack of spuds 
shaping the media, politics, and public policy at Harvard's Kennedy School. Oh boy. It's like granting Joseph Mengele a fellowship in order to participate in the fucking science department. What are you guys doing? Personal news. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Proper, proper, proper accent on this one. Personal news. I'm joining the Sorstein Center at Harvard Kennedy School, Selter tweeted. This fall, I'll be the Walter Sorstein Media and Democracy Fellow, convening discussions, some of which will be live streamed. Oh boy, I would love to see those numbers of those live streams. I'll be waited with, not really bated breath because I don't fucking care. Uh, grateful to Nancy Gibbs and her team from the home. According to Harvard, Stelter will convene a series of discussions about threats to democracy. Oh my god, now he's just going to be able to complain to six people about Tucker Carlton and how popular his show is and mine failed. At the Ivy League school in Cambridge, Mass. Stelter, who was ousted last month amid sweeping changes to the cable news network, wrote on social media that had some discussions. Oh, oh, that some of the discussions will be live streamed. Uh, talking or taking on similar format as his former CNN show. Uh, that's so That's so ridiculous. He also thanked Nancy Gibbs, the director of the center, and the storied former editor-in-chief of Time magazine. Oh, okay, cool. Like I said before, nobody in Hollywood or nobody in cable news ever really fails. They just, instead of failing out, they just fail up. He's just such an unsettling-looking person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stelter was fired last month, and uh, nobody cared. Uh, he ended up going yeah, back on and hosting a final show that was on there and still lapping the ass of CNN. Please hire me back, but guess what, guys? I won't be coming back now because I got a job at Harvard. Fucking Christ. Now, instead of touching the next generation, he can go out there and proselytize to the fucking converted masses. How adorable. So, yeah. With all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.